Hello and welcome in. What's happening, Dan Rice? What's going on, my friend? Mr. Backman, Mr. Kent, Mr. Hummel as well. Welcome in, guys. It's uh, Waffle Mafia Podcast, if you couldn't tell. Uh, guys, apologize for the late night, the late start, and uh, and getting things uh, not quite underway on time, as usual. Uh, I was actually outside chasing the dogs just now, so... Uh, <laughs> That was why my five turned into 15. Been a long night with Graylin. For some reason, he's been a wildcat this evening, so there's that. But with that said, let's get it underway. We've got a Waffle Mafia podcast to do real quick, and then we're going to play. So uh, let's go over here and read some comments. So what's happening to you guys? What's up? Uh, yeah, man, who let the dogs out? Apparently, it was my wife. And um, my dogs don't, uh, they don't have a leash or anything here, so they roam. And sometimes if something catches their attention outside, uh, it is almost nearly impossible to get them back in. So I've been outside uh, roaming through, uh, but that's it is what it is and it do what it do. So let's do a little Waffle Mafia podcast. Let's talk about some of the crazy madness that has gone on this past week, the things that are upcoming within the group, and the things, uh, more or less, uh, anything that's new in the He-Man world, and in the mafia itself. So what we'll do real quickly, we'll run through the podcast. We will uh, talk about a few things, do a little spotlight rundown. Of course, you guys know that we're talking about Point Dread because we're doing Point Dread tonight. Point Dread, one of my absolute favorite things of all time. It's one of my favorite pieces of Master's Mythos. Um, <clears throat> I, I think it fits in beautifully. It's unique. It's something creative. And so... Uh, Appreciate you guys jumping in and doing this thing with me tonight. What's up, uh, Wiley Cat? Holy crap, I'm here. Let's pause for the calls and have a little sip of beer. Ah, there we go, baby. That's what it be. What's happening, Mr. Kent? Thanks for hanging with me. I think I've said hi to Alexander like four times. What's up, uh, Big Show? What's happening, my dude? Uh, Going to have a special guest during the night's waffles, so we have that to look forward to. I also uh, do not know what the special guest has in mind. It's completely up to him. So I'm going to bring him on while we're live. Uh, hopefully uh, we can do that a little more often and maybe get some people involved and let you guys get in and do some things of your own if there are things that you want to do. What's up, Mr. Foster? What's happening, man? I'm just here for the comments. Dude, just sit back with your popcorn. Don't be rude. You know what it is. Uh, appreciate you guys jumping in and hanging out with me and always being patient with uh, with everything that's going on, especially with my wildlife and my wild child, so uh, I appreciate that. All things masters, nothing really crazy going on this week. Um, of course, I posted a little bit earlier this morning, uh, Han Cholo was having that sale, I think that goes on to the end of the month. Um, that silverware, or silverware, <laughs> that... Uh, his silver stuff is absolutely beautiful. Uh, he's got some uh, jewelry that he's done, and uh, the designs are beautiful. You got Battle Cat head, you've got a Shira ring, you've got uh, a Triclops ring. There's a lot of different things he has there. Uh, a little bit on the pricey side. So if you guys are not just uh, for throwing money at rare metals, it may be something to stay away from as for now. But uh, really with the sales prices, it's the lowest it's ever been. So if you guys can uh, nab some of that, uh, it is available over on Han Cello's page. Uh, the link, of course, is on Legends. So, uh, wild child like his daddy. You know what it be, Queen Bee? Um, yeah, Graylin uh, here lately for some reason uh, just wants to party all night. And so... Um, I don't know where he gets it from. I don't, I don't know where. <laughs> Y'all know what it be. Let's talk a little bit of Point Dread, you see. And before we do that, real quick, a uh, couple things to get into, really. Um, of course, the Toys for Tots thing, we've still got that going on. Uh, thank you for the <laughs> for the humble, for the humbleness of humbleness. Uh, Mr. Hummel, of course allowing us to uh, hang on to the box that we have and we're going to do that box for you guys so uh, the plan that we had didn't quite work out so we're going to drop back and punt and Chris was nice enough to uh, say hey you know let's let's do the box for the kids and, and do that for the group so 
uh, the box that we showed off last week that that is still going to be out there uh, I'm actually going to do try to do a very quick turn on this so what we're going to try to do is in place uh, of Thirsty Thursday probably for this upcoming week what we will do is do the Toys for Tots waffle if we can fill it up before then and I'll go ahead and get a promo out there and we'll go ahead and get it ready but if we can fill it up before then uh, we'll certainly roll as soon as we're ready to roll but until then uh, we'll probably put that in place uh, for Thirsty Thursday for next week and what we'll do our best to do is try to fill that wheel up for the kids uh, I'll have more details as far as spots go. I'm really working on something. I'm trying to get the price point down a little bit cheaper. Uh, we do want to raise the thousand dollars for the kids, so uh, I just wanted to make that as easy as possible on you guys because I know you guys have already contributed once. We've jumped in. We've done the thousand uh, dollars. Of course, Joe Ito, our brother from another mother down at La Wheel, he's been doing his piece as well. Uh, so right now we're well over a thousand dollars. I can't remember the actual last updated total, but uh, well over a thousand dollars. And uh, of course, we're going to continue to do this throughout the year uh, to try to uh, raise just a little bit more money before we reach the end of the year and uh, go purchase the uh, toys for the kids. So, what's up, Mr. Delaney? What's happening, good sir? Uh, Free bird got his for fifteen bucks on Think Geek. Must be talking about those rings. Um, I think I know there were some deals on Think Geek as far as those uh, some of those Han Cholo pieces go. So uh, you know it's kind of mix and match thing. If if there's something that you want, at least go over and check and see what the price is and jump back over there too. Because uh, Think Geek also had them for you. So there you go. Um, appreciate that, Freebird. Thanks for throwing it out there, man. Let's a little pause for the calls if we can. Caw, caw. <laughs> I'm struggling with my voice this evening. Y'all don't know what's going on. Uh, tomorrow's Friday. It's meeting day. It's all that good stuff. So I ain't going to keep you all night. It's 1130. I know y'all want to play. All right. So first of all, uh, let's talk a little Point Dread. So uh, Point Dread. Oh, so glorious, man. And here is what it be. This is what we will be playing for, you see. Come on now. Come on now. Come on, bird. Get on off the perch. Watch me throw him in the floor. Well, maybe. Maybe not. Uh, it does not appear that we will, we will be removing the bird from the perch at this moment. I'm not going to knock this whole mess off of here and then we got madness. But, um, point dread. Like I said, one of my absolute favorite play sets as a kid, and I think the reason being, uh, you guys know I'm a huge fan of the Alcala artwork, uh, the stuff uh, from the early minis, um, and this no different. Uh, Alcala did uh, the artwork for the Point Dread, the PowerPoint Dread uh, mini, and because, uh, or not mini, but the actual record book. So because of that, um, absolutely love the way that the Talon Fighter was introduced when it was originally shown. So uh, Point Dread as a kid was something you never heard about. And then you get this really awesome record that comes with the record book. And uh, it is uh, Trouble at Castle Grayskull and the Power Point Dread. It's a two-sided record. Uh, if you guys haven't seen that, we've given it away here a couple of times. What's happening, Cullen? What's going on, brother? Yeah, absolutely beautiful artwork in there. I mean, it is, it is beautiful. So, um, we can we actually have it in our mini comic Bible. So let's step over here for just a second. I'll show you what I'm talking about. For anybody who uh, has never seen this two pack or this uh, record two pack, uh, it came like this. And of course, we have uh, up top. It tells you you've got uh, two stories with record: Masters of the Universe, PowerPoint Dread, and the Danger at Castle Grayskull. And of course. Uh, pinned or, or drawn by the amazing Alfredo Alcala down here at the bottom. So Alcala's depiction of Point Dread, we see it right there on the very opening. So this was the cover of the record. Um, man, absolutely beautiful artwork. You've got Skeletor on, <laughs> on the Talon Fighter. Uh, of course, He-Man defending and Tila taking the blast. So, uh, very cool depiction there. Is it Tila? Is it the Sorceress? We don't necessarily know. But she has the Staff of Ka, so there you go. <laughs> that Grayskull looks more like 2000X. Yeah, it does. Uh, the way that the, um, 
the way that the jaw bridge is drawn and sort of that long up sweep of uh, the castle there. So uh, beautiful stuff uh, by Alcala. And of course, it was accompanied with this amazing record. And so uh, what we get at the very beginning is uh, the intro to the record. We get the power uh, of Point Dread and danger at Castle Grayskull. So before you ever knew anything about this <clears throat> particular place set, if you if you were a child and you didn't know anything about it, uh, and you simply got this the way that I did and just delved into the record, the fact that um, you know I got my Point Dread, knew nothing about it whatsoever, got the record, go over, put that thing on, and then you get to hear this amazing story about why He-Man needs the Talon Fighter and the amazing power of Point Dread and where it came from. So, um, uh, Freeberg says the goddess, you know what it'd be, as her on the cover there, Squirrel. Because in this, we have some different depictions of our girl. Uh, here, we ha we see King Randor. Uh, so there, King Randor a bit different uh, in his depiction. So, of course, uh, we've got uh, He-Man talking to King Randor. And the key to this story is the idea that Skeletor knows that He-Man is bound by duty. He knows that due to his goodness and due to... Uh, upholding his honor and protecting the kingdom that uh, He-Man is bound by duty and and being bound by duty uh, will lock him in one place versus another uh, making it possible for Skeletor uh, to lay siege to Castle Grayskull so if, uh, if he can tie He-Man up somewhere else uh, he can then be freed up to take over the castle so uh, we know that He-Man is bound by his honor and bound by his duty. And what we see is uh, Skeletor, more or less, as he has done multiple times through, <laughs> throughout the mythos, pulled a prank on He-Man and, um, and sort of uh, pretended uh, to be someone else or to have something else going on. So what we see here is Beast-Man being projected into the throne room. He-Man sees Beast-Man behind the king, holding up a boulder. He's fearful for the king's life. He throws his axe and almost kills the king. So, He-Man even says, My God, I almost killed the man. So, it's an amazing story. And, and it, I think that it, uh, as a child, even now, I think it, it sort of, you feel He-Man's remorse. Uh, oh my goodness, I've put the king in danger. I'm now bound. I have to stay and make sure that the king's okay. And far away, we see the evil Skeletor launching his plan. So, uh, uh, he seeks a common anthill and uh, uses his energy blade to do its work. So here we have uh, Skeletor using the energy blade, changing the ants into these monstrous, gigantic monsters that are now going to attack the palace. Uh, back at the king's palace, Man at Arms brings some news. Uh, so he comes to tell He Man uh, that uh, Skeletor is causing some issues. Here we have uh, the Eternian guards, the palace guards. Now they are also represented a bit different here. It would be cool to get those in classics. Uh, so there, there's that. They are just a touch different in their design, but there's the palace guards. Um, and this is, uh, what we see here is the very first time and the only time that Alfredo Alcala drew Zodak. And what we have is He-Man in his dilemma needs to be in two places at one time. And the only way that you could possibly accomplish that is through the power of Point Dread. And with that said, what we see is we do see a scene here where we do have blood. Oh my goodness, someone killed an ant. And then above, below that, we see our very first incarnation of Zodak drawn by Alcala. Now here, Zodak is being the cosmic enforcer, the balancer of all great things. Greetings, He-Man, I'm here to right a great wrong, follow me. So it says, there is a balance in the universe which must be kept, but Skeletor has tipped that balance by playing a terrible trick on you with his energy blade. So. When the record is playing this, I mean, the, the sound effects, the, 
the way the the mystical way that it's presented and the things that are going on even the voice of zodak absolutely amazing um so if you guys have never gotten to hear that record please it's on youtube check it out it's absolutely amazing for about the 15th time um but what we have is he man says yes i know that now but how can i guard castle grayskull when eternia needs me as well how can i be at two places at once here is your answer, He-Man. Behold, Point Dread. Now, interestingly enough here, Zodak goes on to say that Point Dread was created by the same scientist who built Castle Grayskull many years ago. So, before the Great War, Point Dread moves through both time and space, so you can go anywhere in Eternia in just an instant. Just fly the Talon Fighter above it to any place that you want to go. Now, interestingly enough as well, with the Talon Fighter, Point Dread also moves through time and space, so Point Dread is able to materialize in different places, be it in space, be it in, on Eternia, be it at the top of Castle Grayskull, uh, high top the Mystic Mountains. Ah, yes, sir. He-Man leaps to the controls of the fighter, and with uh, his mighty strength and skill, He-Man forces a giant warbird full speed towards Castle Grayskull. At that very same moment, Skeletor is eyeing his new prize. In a flash, He-Man finds himself at Castle Grayskull. So, Skeletor, not really sure where He-Man came from. So, bam, uh, the PowerPoint Dread, able to move through time and space. He-Man is able to be at two places at the same time. So, there is uh, really one of my favorite stories of all time, and especially... Uh, concerning the fact that I love the Talon Fighter as much as I do. It's, it's always been something that, as a kid, I flew that thing through their house like nine million times. Um, I thought it was cool that when Classics did this, we didn't get the handle. Some people wanted the handle, some people didn't. Um, I personally think it looks much cooler without it. Um, of course, you're not necessarily going to be flying this warbird through the house. Um, I mean, you can. I certainly have. Uh, but, uh, you know, beautifully sculpted, beautifully done. Uh, the Four Horsemen did a wonderful job uh, on this sculpt, did a wonderful job on this piece. Um, really bringing it to life and uh, doing it in a scale that is consistent with Castle Grayskull. So, uh, again, just like with your vintage playset, uh, the Point Dread and the Talon Fighter fits on top of the classics Castle Grayskull. Uh, I have to have my little he dude watch this or read it. Oh yeah, he'll love that. Uh, if he's never seen that story, KPB, that will be his thing, because I'm telling you, uh, I don't know, that story just always captivated me. I thought it was amazing that um, Zodak was always stepping out to balance the scales and you know when it when it really came down to something that he man didn't have a whole lot of control over uh, Zodak would step in and and balance things and make it right and the Talon fighter and point dread to me was such a mystical magical thing because uh, it's sort of like it appears when it's needed um, interestingly enough, if we go early and we go back, um, the very first way that Point Dread and the Talon Fighter was presented um, was in some uh, DC stuff, so in the early DC Motu stuff, and um, it only comes every 20 years, so it had like a 20 year thing where it appeared. Um, also, very interestingly too, and we'll do this and we'll wrap it up and we'll get on to this waffle, but... Um, there was a moment where it's not very consistent with uh, any of the canon, and, and of course it's in, in direct contrast to the canon, but um, there is a telling of Point Dread as being Skeletor's lair. Uh, so that is in, uh, let's see, that is in the 1984 UK World Motu Annuals. So um, <clears throat> what you'll find there is described as Skeletor's evil lair, it was possibly written before Snake Mountain was created. Um, 
he had no association whatsoever with the Talon Fighter. So they simply talked about Point Dread. There was no associated, uh, association with Talon Fighter at all. Described as an underground multi-level fortress with all the same doom and gloom of Snake Mountain, it appears as a blackish mountain-like tower that rises from the Eternian Sea. Interesting. Uh, made of naturally glowing rock formations. The entrance was a steep sloping passage with twisting stairs that led deep below. Within Point Dread was made up of a vast labyrinth of passages, caves, pits, mines, and dungeons. Deep underground, Skeletor's prisoners served as miners in the sulfur mines of Point Dread. So, uh, as I came across that earlier, I just thought, man, that, that is a very interesting piece, I think, that never gets talked about um, with Point Dread and the Town Fighter, and I thought it was cool to run across it. So there it is, uh, and that's what it be. Uh, it was an evil lair for Skeletor, you see. Um, of course, 84 German Motu audio plays. It was a mobile command center used by the Masters of the Universe, which stood in different places at various times. It could even be found in outer space. Uh, of course, continuing Motu Classics continued with the same continuity and more or less keeping thing, uh, keeping everything the same with uh, Point Dread and the Town Fighter. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, guys. Y'all know what it be. And it pops up again in 2012 in those DC comics you see. So, again, one of my favorite pieces of all time, uh, Point Dread and the Town Fighter. Huge piece of, of Motu history. Uh, my personal point during the Talon Fighter uh, was donated by uh, was donated to me by my good buddy Paul Rudman. So uh, I always like to give a big shout out to Ruddy Buddy for hooking me up with that. Uh, it was one of those pieces that it's a grail piece for me. It's something that is is a huge part of my collection. I will probably never ever get rid of it. Um, so. Paul knew how bad I wanted that thing. It was close around Christmas. He had some, uh, you know, some credits, did some goodwill, and there you go. So I appreciate that, Ruddy Buddy. Appreciate you, yo. So there that is, and there's what it be. We've talked about some Talon Fighter and some Point Dread. You see, it's time to get on over here and uh, get, oh, what's up, Artemis? What's happened, dude? Uh, it's time to get on over here and get this thing done, and uh, let's give ourselves away a classics talent fighter son so thank you guys for coming out doing the waffle mafia thing with me popculturenetwork.com check it out if you've never been there uh if you're listening or you want to listen at a later time or on a different device you can always go over to podbean check out fans of power check out masters of the galaxy podcast check out the waffle mafia podcast uh all those back um shows are there too if you guys want to catch up with that and make it do what it do i appreciate y'all hanging with me i'm sorry for the late late night uh it's 11:45, guys let's do a waffle all right let's do it on a thursday how about that give me about five minutes to get that thing set now it really is five minutes this time i don't have a dog outside we don't have anything crazy going on so uh five minutes and let's get it on let's get on over here and do what we do it's been a waffle mafia podcast preach y'all hanging with you i love you guys y'all have a good one we'll see you in a minute and we're going to pound some beers and we're going to spin it. There it is, baby. Thanks for hanging with me. I'll see you in a minute. You see?